Today we're going to walk through pawn shop accounting, what it should look like, and what Mountain State did. This will prepare you for reconstructing the pawn shop activity. So when a customer comes in with an item and wants a loan, you give them cash and you take the item. At that time you don't own the item, you have a bailment, you have a duty to uh, care for it, make sure that it doesn't get uh, lost or damaged or stolen, um, and the customer, ha uh, you have a loan. And so at the time that the cash goes out here, you would record a reduction to cash and an increase to an asset called accounts receivable or loan receivable. And so if the customer comes in and makes their payment, so they're imagine a month later they come in and pay their 20 percent per month what an impressive interest rate uh, cash would be deposited into the business and then interest income or interest revenue is recorded for the interest and then let's say that at the time that they pay that first interest payment they're able to pay a little bit on the loan so you'd have a deposit for the loan portion and then you would reduce the accounts receivable for the portion of the loan that they repaid Let's say for this particular customer they didn't make any other payments, that the 3000 was all they ever paid, so they defaulted and the item became the property of the business. At the time of the default, the balance, which is the original 10000 less the 1000 already paid, that 9000 net would be the cost of the inventory that's now forfeited and owned by the business, and the accounts receivable would be reduced. It would be eliminated. They don't owe it anymore. You own this, their item. This is not what Mountain State did. So let's review what Mountain State did. At the time that Workman wrote the check or gave the cash to the customer, he wrote it off to cost of goods sold. He did not record a loan. If there were interest payments and if he deposited them all, which we're not sure, then cash was debited and in 2006, interest income was credited, and in the uh, 07 and 08, sales, it just went straight in and was commingled with sales. It wasn't separated out. If there were deposits for loan repayments, and we don't know how much or if any of them were deposited in the business, uh, they were just commingled with other sales, loan repayments. Uh, at the time that a loan was defaulted and the item became the inventory of the business, there was no entry made. So that's all. The loans are invisible because they were never booked. The forfeited items are invisible because they're never booked. And if the forfeited items are then subsequently resold, we don't know if any of those uh, sales were booked or deposited into the business. So in our interview with Workman, let's flip to the next tab here. In our interview with Workman, of uh, that piece has been cut and pasted into your file for you. He gives us enough details to be able to reconstruct at least partially what happened with the business. And the critical details are circled in red. We have the checks that were written to cash that are presumed to be pawn loans. We have his admission that the average loan balance was about 50000 and that the interest rate was 20% per month and the default rate was about 35 to 40%. We have some cash uh, pawn repayments that were deposited and we do have some interest payments that were deposited. So we'll put those uh, details over here. They're in the green boxes here. So let's just review what we do know, or at least what workmen would admit to. The loans, at least the checks to cash, now he had cash on hand, so we don't know what loans he might have made from just the cash drawer, but the checks that were written to cash that were given to customers were the 91000 97000 in 07 and 08. There was probably some pawn shop activity in 06, but... Uh, it was only a partial year, and it's just hard to tell what that is. So we're going to do 2007-2008. Uh, and then you can put 35% here or 40%. He says it's 35 to 40%. So, of course, if this was presented in a court, there'd be a little haggling about 
35 or 40 percent. But we're going to link all of our computations to this cell so that we can change to 35 percent and see how it would change the numbers. It's hard to tell what the average length of the loans were. Looks like just under 100,000 in loans may have been made. Uh, maybe a little bit more than that for the loans that were made out of the cash drawer. And that the average loan balance was 50,000. He tells us that in his uh, interview here. So the average loan could be as long as six months. And, uh, and we're going to point all the computations to this cell. So you can change it around to three months or five months or six months. And, and that would be argued in a court if workmen did not agree to these amounts and claim that they were the wrong amounts and he needed to repay some different amount. He claimed that, that uh, the markup was twice the cost of the item and that the interest rate was 20%. So there wasn't a lot of argument or play in those two numbers. So we go ahead and put in what Workman said. And then we have, for interest payments, the deposits that were made. And we have in here the loan repayments that were deposited into the business. So these amounts were turned over to the business. We don't know the amount of forfeited items. And we don't know where the sales from forfeited items went. What we're going to do in the next video is calculate here what we think those amounts might have been and then see what differences we find. We will then reconstruct a mini income statement from pawn activities so that the owners, the new owners, can see what kind, how was this pawn shop business doing. It was uh, thought to be more profitable and more exciting new place for the business to grow and did it. And then once we've reconstructed the pawn shop activity, what parts of that did Workman keep for himself that we would like him to repay?